Hi, this is Dr. Jerome Fryer, and this is a lumbopelvic model that I have handcrafted to help in the better understanding of dynamic pain generators associated with the lumbar and the pelvic area. Each joint is created with an elastomeric structure to allow dynamic movement as seen here with flexion and extension of the respective ilia. This model now can show dynamic external and internal rotation as well as many other degrees of freedom to help in the differential diagnosis and treatment plans associated with low back and pelvic pain. Here you can see the two-part discs the nerve roots, and on the back side, the facet joints, as well as the ligamentum flava, holding the posterior elements in position. Posterior pelvic tilt and anterior pelvic tilt can be demonstrated showing flexion and respective extension, as well as lateral flexion. This can be helpful in the differentiation between whether a pain generator is anterior, as in the case of flexion, creating compression primarily to the intervertebral discs, or extension, as stress shielding occurs with the facet joints. Dynamic sacroiliac joints will show how the pubic symphysis will move relative to the sacroiliac joint. Countermutation can be shown by pressing distally on the sacrum. This can be helpful in looking at pain generators during the investigation of the spine with motion palpation. Internal and external rotation of the ilia can be seen as well as flexion and extension. With rotation, left rotation will approximate or reduce the space in the right facet joints, while left rotation will gap open or create increased space in the right facet joints. This is a common procedure performed when conducting spinal manipulation in the attempt to gap open the facet joints. Careful Posterior to anterior palpation can lead to a better understanding of anatomical pain generators when asking patients whether or not the motion renders discomfort or a sensation of pain. Pushing posterior to anterior will approximate the facet joints because this model has been crafted from a real cadaveric specimen, an osteophyte can be seen here on the left ilia. And it is believed that this left SI joint has been hypermobile and has resulted in the development of osteophytosis in the efforts for the body to stabilize the joint. One of the take-home messages with this lumbopelvic model is that posterior pelvic tilt will render the lumbar spine into flexion, while anterior pelvic tilt will create a relative extension movement to the facet joints, creating approximation. This can be helpful in the differential diagnosis of whether pain generators are an anterior structure or a posterior structure.